Polyprotic acids are acids with more than one acidic proton. And so for each of these, when we're developing an equilibrium, we must calculate the contribution of each successive acid form to get the total picture of what our equilibrium solution looks like. And so just a few of these that are common um, that we've seen, sulfuric acid, phosphoric acid, sulfuric has two acidic protons, phosphoric has three, carbonic's going to have two, and it's H2CO3, and then amino acids will have two as well, for the most part, some have more, um, but biomolecules, we'll see those much later than a general chemistry course, but just to get a good picture of what's coming, we have a protonated nitrogen, and then a carboxylic acid on one end. So you've got an acidic proton on the nitrogen and an acidic proton on the carboxylate group. So just some things that we have to look forward to there. Of course, we know sulfuric, phosphoric, and carbonic already. Let's look at an equilibrium calculation with a solution of sulfuric acid. So um, the first proton of sulfuric acid, we have already learned that sulfuric acid is a strong acid. So in water, before any reaction or any equilibrium is developed, we fast transfer this first proton to form the conjugate base, which will actually be our acid form in the second deprotonation, anhydronium, H3O+. So that happens automatically fast. First thing is we dissociate the first proton because it's a strong acid. And because it's a strong acid, um, we have molarity here of 0 0.100 molar. Well, if we assume a volume of one liter, here we are moles per liter, exactly one liter, so we'll not worry about sig figs, uh, three there for our what we're given with three, um, then we would have 0 0.100 moles of H2SO4 to begin with. We're looking for pH. pH is an intensive property, something that doesn't depend on how much is there. So any amount of volume you select is going to work out because it should all give the same value. And that's our initial moles of H2SO4. And so one transfer, initially we have zero for our, both of our products and water's the solvent, so it's not going to play into this. Um, there's billions of those already there. There's plenty of water to go around. But one to one here, we lose one proton. So we're going to have a change of losing all of the strong acids protons and then gaining those same number of moles for each one of the dissociated products. So that our final mole count here is zero for H2SO4 and then 0.1 and 0.1 for hydronium. And that's where we're starting for our second weak acid dissociation for the bisulfate ion here. So HSO4 minus is also an acid. And so we draw the reaction that corresponds to Ka, which is add to water, donate your proton, now we make the sulfate ion, and more hydronium. And so this is for Ka is 0 0.012 as we see in our tables that we uh, will be given on our exam. Um, we're not memorizing Ka values, so I found that from a resource. Now. Where are we starting? So every time you do a polyprotic acid, you go through this first step, and then you have to have a starting position for each one of these. So if we're assuming again one liter, we started with 0.1 moles per one liter. And so initially, if we do an ice table here, which is what we'll do, initial concentration 0 0.100 moles per liter, 0 0.1 molar. And for sulfate, we're zero. Don't have any of that yet. 
but for hydronium we also have 0 0.100 I just divide by one liter for our moles here divide by one to get 0.1 molar so our ice table are equal initial change equilibrium we have to deal in concentrations not full stoichiometric conversions where we deal with moles like we see above it's very similar to what we see with the titration as well where we have to do mole calculation uh, stoichiometry before we begin our equilibrium uh, calculations so anyway we've got an initial condition for both our acid form and our hydronium there and really and truly this is an equilibrium so I should have our equilibrium arrows here okay so we're ready to go what's our change we're gonna lose some of our acid add some sulfate and lose some or gain some of our hydronium so we're gonna get a little bit more hydronium out of this when we reach equilibrium point one one zero minus X plus X there for sulfate and then point one plus X for our equilibrium concentration of hydronium and so one thing we have to see here is that our Ka values 0 0.012 and our concentrations are 0 0.100 well we have measured all the way to the thousandths place here and so to be able to ignore the size of our X values compared to our Ka and our initial concentration we'd like Ka to be at least three significant digits even past smaller than um, our last significant digit of our calculation and so we'd much rather see this instead of 0 0.012 so it turns out that it's a significant size as in X is significantly large relative to 0.1 that we are going to have to worry about this and then use the quadratic equation okay and so I'm sorry you didn't see that but that's what we would like to see if we were able to ignore X we'd like to see that we are at least one two three digits away from our last significant digit turns out we're not we're actually lined right up with our last significant digit so we definitely can't ignore that X we've got to use the quadratic equation so anyway let's set up Ka and its products overreactants pure liquids pure solids are ignored only the things that are aqueous are used let's substitute in X for sulfate or um, ion there SO4 2 minus and then 0 0.1 plus X for our um, hydronium ion and then 0 0.1 minus X for our bisulfate ion so if we multiply everything together here um, we'll distribute the top and multiply through by 0.1 minus X to both sides and we get 0 0.012 times 0 0.1 minus X equals we'll distribute through up here X times 0 0.1 plus X squared so we rearrange everything set everything equal to zero so we get our quadratic and we're going to end up with x squared plus 0.112 x minus 0.0012 and so if we're setting up for the quadratic equation that means a is equal to 1 b is equal to 0.112 and c is equal to negative 0.0012 so we have our negative B 0.112 plus or minus well the plus is all that we're going to worry about because we're only concerned about real concentrations not negative concentrations so 0.112 plus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A 1 times C negative 0.0012 all of that over 2a which is 2 times 1 so if we do the quadratic equation we're going to get an X value that's equal to point 
0.00985 molar, and that's actually the concentration of sulfate, not the concentration of hydronium. The concentration of hydronium we define by our ice table is equal to 0.1 plus x. So really we're 0.10985 molar in hydronium, which comes out to a pH of 0.959 um, for our sulfuric acid solution at 0.1 molar. So if we had another acid like carbonic, we'd have to do two equilibriums because it's a weak acid to start with. If it's um, a triprotic acid like phosphoric acid, you've got to do this three times with three ice tables. Each um, successive ice table begins with the initial condition of the final concentration of the previous. So again, not to be too wordy, but all we did was find our concentrations after the first step and use those as our starting points for the second acid um, um, dissociation. So at that point, we'd use our end result of our second. If we had a third, we'd just plug those in for the third and we'd keep going until we ran out of acidic protons.